have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Surprised. Yeah, well, we're miles up and you're afraid of heights. I'm not afraid. Just not wild again. One. No! Ah! Pull me down! They brought me a duchess once. Uh, Quite a fat thing. Uh, but you, all skin and bones. Uh, they tell me you're a princess. Let's hope they haven't spoiled you rotten. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? What I'm going to be talking to you about today is how they hide your real history from you. And the history that I'm talking about today are giants. Now, most people in this day and age, they do not 
look back or investigate past 25 years ago. They just believe that any kind of history that goes back any further than that, they already know. It was taught to them in school. It's real. It's the real history. And they will argue that to the death just because that's what they were taught. So, for example, let's go look up and see who was the tallest man ever in history according to our information that they give us. Okay, let's go to Google. Who was the tallest man in history? They're going to tell us Robert Wadlow. Okay. That's what he looks like. Now let's stroll down here. Robert Pershing Wadlow, also known as the Alton Giant and the Giant of Illinois, was an American man who was the tallest person in recorded history for whom there is irrefutable evidence he was born and raised in Alton, Illinois, a small city near St. Louis, Missouri. Now that's the first answer that Google will give you, but long before any American news, ABC, NBC, CBS News, you only had one news center that covered all the news all over the world, and it was called Path News and later became British Pop News and they hold all the archives to all the old news footage in the world. You will never find any of this on YouTube, CBS, any of that bullcrap. As you can see here, Pop News was a producer of newsreels and documentaries from 1910 to 1970 in the United Kingdom. Its founder, Charles Pop was a pioneer of moving pictures in the silent era. The Poth News Archive is known today as British Poth. British Poth is home to a treasure trove of 220,000 news films from 1896 to 1984. The collection is unraveled in its historical and cultural significance. Now, history will have you to believe that this is the tallest man in history who ever lived. And the only reason why is because he had a hormone problem. And any other giants who grew about this tall, they'll tell you the same thing. They had hormone problems, medical problems. They want you to think that. Now, I'm going to show you the giants who were taller than him and around at the same time he was who didn't have any kind of problems at all. And... They don't put them in the history books. Why? Because they didn't have medical problems. He's the only one that had medical problems they could come up with an excuse and cover this giant story up. Now let me show you from the British Path News from between 1895 and 1920. A couple of these are going to be silent because they didn't have audio on these films until around 1920. So first, let's look at the British Path news footage of Robert Wadlow. Making ends feet is certainly a big job when it takes size 39 shoes to fit them. Two in one do go. Here's the owner, Robert Wadlow of Chicago, who at the ripe old age of 17, stands eight feet four inches in his socks and incidentally seems to be quite beyond the reach of young women. Every time young Robert goes through a doorway, he scores a duck. And this is Robert's father, a mere dwarf of six feet. Now let's look at the giants who were before Robert who were taller than Robert, and even some giants who were the same size, but none of them are mentioned in the history books. Give her a big hand is an expression that has only one meaning for 26-year-old Ted Evans of Englefield Green, Surrey. For Ted, at present appearing in a Pete Curran show, is the world's tallest man. Nine feet, three and a half inches on going to press and still growing. bicycle, of course, was built specially. There's no comfort for Ted in a bus or in a train. Well, his head catches in the luggage rack. That's not all. Expensive special suits become too small in a few months. No stock shirts, hats or socks will fit him. And his boots come at 25 pounds a pair.
Shikoku Islands for a tour of post-war reconstruction in Japan's southwestern islands. Most of those in the crowd will cheer him, since in pre-war days, when he was considered divine, it was a sacrilege to even look at him. It's quite a change, but the Japs seem to like it. Now I know some of you people are stubborn who are watching this and you only believe what your history books told you, but I just proved to you your history books are liars. They just told you that that was the tallest man ever in history, but I just showed you people bigger than him and taller than him. And if you'll go back into the Bible, you'll see that people were up to 30 foot tall they even depicted in movies now for example let's take the movie gods of egypt check out the god horus watch the difference in his size and the normal egyptian people around him look at the size difference in his size and their size check it out eventually <laughs> But don't discount Horus yet either, because when it comes to the fate of the world in one's hands, even gods can be surprised by the strength they possess. <sighs> if I was to be crowned, I might have spent the preceding hours composing a message for my people. Could the people love him more? Maybe Lord Horus doesn't think we need boring speeches. Except when it comes to toasting his own glory. Many toasts were required. I was doing deeds of which songs will be sung. Now, Hollywood just didn't make this up for the movie. They did this because they were going by the ancient depictions that the Egyptians and all the other ancient civilizations depicted throughout all their cultures. Now these giants that I just showed you in the black and white footage from the British Poth News from the late 1800s, early 1900s, these are called the Nephil. These are the children of the giants, the descendants. When they say children, they mean the descendants. And these people range anywhere from seven foot to 13 foot tall. And then you have the original giant Nephilim, the offspring of the fallen angels. They were 13 foot tall to 36 foot tall and this goes all the way back to the first book of the bible in genesis 6 4 and you won't find very many street preachers when i say street preachers i'm talking about the normal preacher in most churches around the world i'm talking about biblical scholars understand this because they know the books they've read the books also that have been stripped from the bible but we're not even talking about those books we're the original story starts in the book of Genesis 6, 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This ties back into Genesis chapter 6, when the Bible says that the sons of God, which were the angels, came down in Genesis 6 and they had sex with the daughters of men 
that means angels was mixing with people they mix with these females and the Bible says from the angels and the women mixing a race of giants was produced called the Nephilim y'all got what I'm saying now the Nephilim uh, the Bible says these was men of renown and what that means is these are what your myths are made upon see we thought Hercules and all that was a myth but it was really giants that the Bible says was produced the Bible says once these giants was produced they, they got a taste for human flesh that's what the Bible says in Genesis and so they, they turned on man and began to devour men you got what I'm saying this was a reason for the flood because they had the Bible says sin against birds and beasts they began to mix the DNA of animals and come up with these hybrid creatures that God did not create uh, y'all got one I'm trying to help y'all now now I'm not going I'm not going to really deal with whether you believe or not that's on you I'm just going to tell you the facts and you get it or don't they created this uh, okay so the Bible says because they had corrupted God's creation this is why God was so harsh in flooding the whole world and destroying everybody. And you didn't know that at first because you thought God is a terrible God just to kill these good people. <laughs> Even the movie just came out, Noah, how they made like these were these people were just, uh, they were sinful, but they were still good people. No, they were, these people had, had, had uh, altered their DNA by mixing with beasts and, and birds and these fallen creatures. So they were no longer God's creation. That's why the Bible says only Noah was righteous, meaning only Noah had the correct blood. He still had the correct DNA and the correct bloodline. So God saved Noah and his family because they the only ones had the correct bloodline. Everybody else had already partook of or mixed with strange flesh. Do y'all got what I'm trying to say? And because of the mixture with the strange flesh, they, uh, uh, the Bible says that uh, they created this, these other hybrid creatures and violence was in the earth and God said let me destroy this earth now for years and years you've heard the story of Noah and you just thought that people were just sinning like they just sinned in the day and you just thought well God just got tired of them sinning so he gonna just kill everybody and you know God's killing children and everybody but you gotta realize these people were no longer his creation I would like to know why God flooded the earth during Noah's time Thank you for teaching God's Word the way it should be taught. Well, bless you, Austin. It's good to hear from you. The, um, uh, our father, he kind of hated that he had to do it because he promised in, in, that he would never do it again, that he'd never destroy the earth again by water. Um, but, but he will do it by his presence, which is he is a consuming fire. But Satan knowing that his days were numbered, he sent his fallen angels to earth and they took wives and they had children born to them as Genesis 6 stipulates. And it was not natural. That's why they were giants. So that, that destroyed God's purpose of bringing Christ upon this earth and giving everyone the opportunity to make his or her mind up whether they love God or Satan. But to date, we probably have about 14 or 1500 accounts and going from Catalina Island, California to Martha's Vineyard, double rows of teeth, seven foot and taller skeletons reported. New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, and it's not just newspaper accounts. George Washington reported giant bones in Virginia. Even Abraham Lincoln talked about the discovery of giant bones. At a certain point, I reluctantly started to believe. But if all the accounts are to be believed, what is the truth about these enormous skeletons? Are these colossal creatures evidence of a lost world that's remained hidden for thousands of years? There was a royal class of giant Native Americans. This civilization radiated out from the Ohio River Valley, built geometric forms and massive pyramid-like structures, burial mounds. But also, the Native Americans spoke of an ancient enemy, oftentimes portrayed as a cannibalistic race of giants. But the story doesn't end there. Every culture around the world has myths and legends about giants. You have Goliath, the Titans, the Cyclops or Grendel, Paul Bunyan and Jack and the Beanstalk. It's in the collective imagination of humanity for some reason. Could several millennia of folklore and mythology be rooted in an incredible reality? 
Was there an ancient American civilization that once built astonishing stone monuments and entombed its gigantic dead? If so, then where is the physical evidence? Where are the giant skeletons? Museums had these bones. They were in the records. There's literally a thousand individual accounts, but to date there is not one verified giant bone at a museum. That's the big mystery. Where are the bones? One explanation could be that reported giant bones were among thousands of skeletons returned to native tribes according to federal repatriation laws. It just seems like it slipped through the hands of history. If there were scientists around the turn of the 20th century who deliberately concealed these alleged giant finds. There is a distinct possibility that they were actively taken away. They're in some dark corner because they're not matching up with somebody's uh, version of human history. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which would have old. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I, I wonder do you know him? <laughs> my king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You see, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. 